Hey, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Ink Nouveau, and I'm going to show you today the Apica Premium CD Notebooks. Uh, man, they, I gotta say, I had high expectations for this paper. It is very expensive paper, and whew, it definitely delivers. It is some of the best feeling paper that I think you can get today. Uh, really cool stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna focus mainly on the overview of the brand, the different sizes and rulings and that kind of stuff. I will touch on uh, the writing and actual paper quality and stuff, um, but I'm gonna be doing separate videos on the comparisons and all that. But anyway, here is Apica Premium. So I inked up five different pens with five different inks. It's actually the same pen and ink combination that I used in the regular Apica review. I really wanted to get an idea of the dry time with this paper because it's super smooth, super slick. It is an absolute pleasure to write on. But usually when you have paper that's this slick, the compromise is the dry time. And this is no exception, okay? If you're expecting fast drying paper or if you're a lefty and you need something to dry really fast, maybe this is probably not the paper for you. But if you do want paper that is super slick, feels really, really pleasant to write on, um, it makes your ink lines very, very crisp. It makes the ink colors pop because the ink is not absorbing into the paper. It's going to give you a lot of shading. If these are all things that are making you drool all over your keyboard or your phone or whatever right now, then I definitely would recommend this paper. Um, the compromise is the dry time. Pretty much everything I tested here, the dry time was longer than, you know, at least on par with Rodia Clairefontaine. It was longer than the regular Apica. Um, and that's, that's totally to be expected when you have a slick paper like this. Uh, the one pleasant surprise I did have was actually Noodler's 54th Massachusetts. That's a bulletproof ink, and usually bulletproof inks take a while to dry, um, but that dried in 20 seconds there. I think that's a testament to the ink as much as anything. Um, but for pretty much any ink that you're gonna use, you can expect the dry time is gonna be long, but you can also expect it's gonna look pretty awesome on this paper. I had Drew, he's my, you know, he works with us. He's our shipping manager here. He loves doodling with all kinds of stuff. He's, you, you know, you've probably seen some of his drawings that he's done uh, for, for people and stuff uh, on, online. But uh, he, he helped me test out some of this too. He used some of his own pens. He's got, you know, Noodler's Navajo Turquoise here, Diamond Matador. Um, those all look good. He tested a, a variety of different colors. All of them held really tight. The only one that was a little bit troublesome uh, as to be expected, was base date blue in a flex pen. Uh, the flex pens are incredibly wet, a Noodler's flex pen. Drew likes to use that combination because he really wants to push the limits of what the paper can handle. Basically, the only paper that's really handled uh, uh, that ink well has been uh, like the Midori thin paper, which is really kind of just a special thing. It's only available in one size, but that's the only thing that's really held up uh, beautifully to that combo. But even still on this paper, um, there's a little bit of feathering even with that combo, but it's really not nearly as bad as I see on most other papers. But everything else looks great though. I mean, you have 41 Brown looks awesome. Green, Noodler's Green Cactus Eel and Cactus Fruit Eel, those are both lubricated inks. And Drew said that the dry time on those really wasn't as bad as he expected. Um, he didn't do anything scientific, uh, you know, as far as time and stuff like that. But he said that in his use, that um, he was pleasantly surprised with that it was not as long a dry time as he would anticipate. Um, some other things, you know, the cactus fruit, some more Navajo turquoise there. And then he just did a couple of little doodles there. So some fun stuff, but you know, the inks pop on here. It's not as cr like eye crushing white as some of the other, you know, papers like Rodia Clairefontaine, but um, really nice, makes the inks pop and look really good. You're probably curious as to the paper color of the Apica premiums and while the color accuracy of this video is gonna depend on a lot of different factors. I figure at least I can show you relative to some, to some other notebooks, maybe what you're looking at. So I just grabbed a couple. Um, I have here a Rhodia dot pad. So this is the typical Rhodia white. The Apica premium is a little more off-white than that. Um, I, still I would still call this white paper, but it's not super stark white like the Rhodia is here. I have the Apica CD paper, the regular stuff, that's actually a little grayer than the premium. The premium has a little bit more of a yellowish tint to it. Uh, not quite as much of a yellow tint as the Rhodia premium. Rhodia premium looks, you know, quite yellow in comparison to everything else going on here. Uh, I also have a moleskin and that's uh, 
got more of a yellowish tone to it as well. Not quite as much as the Rhodia Premium, but definitely more than the Apica Premium. And then I've got a Leuchtturm journal as well. And that um, is probably the, one of the closer matches to the Apica. Uh, and, uh, but it still has a little more of a yellow tone to it. So hopefully that'll at least give you some idea uh, for the color of, of the paper itself. Thought you might enjoy seeing me doodle a little bit. Um, here I've just got a Lamy Vista. The fine nib. And this is uh, Noodler's Black. And I tell you, this is some really great feeling paper. It really is. Um, some of the best stuff that I've used. It's on par with Rhodia Premium, uh, you know, your Claire Fontaine stuff. God. Pilot Iroshizuku Ama Iro and a Pilot Custom 823. Awesome stuff. The only thing is, you want to be careful, if you have a pen that's prone to skipping, it may be exacerbated on smooth paper like this. Not this paper alone, any kind of slicker paper. Um, it's going to be a little less absorbent, so it's going to tend to not overcome flaws with your nib, if that makes any sense. Um, so if you have, you know, a, an ink that or a pen that is prone to want to skip or want to have trouble starting or something like that, this paper is not going to help that. Pretty much is what I'm trying to get at. Um, I got a Pilot Custom 74, one of my favorite pens of all time. Medium nib, uh, Noodler's 54th. Good stuff. And I really just enjoy this. And, and honestly, I, I personally prefer really slick paper. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Chances are, if you're watching this, you probably do enjoy slick paper. But it's awesome stuff. And last thing I'm going to show you here is I've got a Pelican M200 with an italic nib and Noodler's Apache Sunset. I particularly like um, using italic nibs on slick paper like this, uh, mainly because, whoops, mainly because it just gives you really crisp line variation, good shading, you know, it kind of brings out the best in what stub nibs have to offer. So there you have it. Good stuff, man. There are four different sizes of the Apica CD Premium notebooks. Smallest one is an A6 size, 105 by 148 millimeters, just over four inches by just under six inches. Um, overall thickness is about 10 and a half millimeters or just under half an inch. Um, pretty good size overall. This is the smallest of the bunch. The next size we have here is an A5, which is 148 by 210 millimeters, which is just under six by just over eight inches. Next size up, we have a B5. This one's kind of an interesting size. It's more of like a lab notebook size. Uh, closer to a seven by 10 inch. It's 182 millimeter by 257 millimeter. And then the largest one we have here is an A4, which this one is kind of exciting because, uh, you know, they don't have an A4 size, or at least uh, not one that we carry at GouletPens.com. In the regular size app, because the 7x10 is the biggest that we get. Uh, but we did bring it in with the premium, so that one is 8.25 uh, inch by 11 and 3 quarter inch. And then that's about 210 millimeter by 297. So if you're familiar with any of the Rodier, Clairefontaine, any of the uh, you know European notebooks, A4 is a kind of a common size. So is A5 and A6. So there are three different colors of the Apica Premium notebooks, and they're not just random colors. Each color is assigned to the ruling that it has inside the notebook. So the black notebooks are all blank plain paper. The red notebooks are all five millimeter graph uh, or, you know, whatever, whatever else you want to call it, grid. I've heard it called sometimes. Um, and then the blue ones are all ruled. Now, the blank ones are all the same. You know, it's just it's blank paper. The graph ones are the same. They're all five millimeter and go straight to the edge. The ruled ones uh, vary a little bit depending on the size. So there are four different sizes of notebook here. The smallest one, the A6, is a six and a half millimeter ruling. 
and it does have a margin on it. You can see here it's got a margin at the top. Um, it's got a little bit darker lines on the top and the bottom. It's got a slight margin on the bottom, and the lines actually don't go all the way to the edge of the page. I don't know if that's good or bad for you. For me personally, I don't really mind one way or another. I know that can make a difference for some of you, so I thought it would be worth pointing out. The next size up, the A5, has a seven millimeter ruling. And again, it's got the similar kind of thing where it's got the margin at the top, margin at the bottom, slightly bigger, you know, respectively to accommodate the size notebook that it is. Uh, but there's your seven millimeter ruling. The B5 is the same as the A5. It's also a seven millimeter ruling. And it has, again, margins at the top and the bottom. And then the largest one, the A4 size, is an eight millimeter ruling. And you can see here, it's got even bigger margins at the top and bottom to accommodate, uh, and it's got that larger size. So, I uh, thought that would be worth pointing out. You can see the, the cover itself is the same on all the sizes. The design, overall design is the same. It does have this index sheet here that is uh, the same in all the different notebooks. This is uh, across all the different Apica premiums. It's got just a spot up here for your name, and you can kind of index. The pages aren't numbered or anything, but if you want to number them yourself, you can, or you can at least kind of make a list of your content. But that is a summarization of the ruling of these notebooks. The covers on these are all more or less identical. Um, they say CD notebook, choose the paper like you would a good pen. I think that's fairly fitting comments. The cover itself is relatively thin. You know, I was asked on Twitter uh, when I posed the question, what, you know, what did you want me to show in this video? Somebody asked how floppy the notebooks were. So, um, you know, the smaller ones generally don't have a great deal of flop to them, but I got the A4 one here and um, you can see it's got a considerable, you know, flop to it. It's definitely not a hardcover notebook by any means, but um, you know, if you want to roll this thing up, you definitely can. It's, it's a soft cover. It's very similar to if you're familiar with the, um, you know, Clairefontaine basic notebooks. That's a lot what this cover is like. Um, the binding for the notebooks is really good too. It's a stitched and glued binding, and the signatures that they wrap these things in are very, very small. So it's 96 sheets in all the notebooks every size, every ruling, and they bind them together in 12 different signatures. So the signatures are really tight. That's the, the groupings of paper in here. It's very tight. Um, and what that allows to do is it allows the notebook to bend at its binding so that it lay, lies really flat when you have it on the table. Now, I haven't really monkeyed with this too much. It's pretty much just doing this from the get-go. You can see here um, some of the stitching in there. Um, you know. You, it's it's never a bad thing to just kind of you know go like this and get it to lie flatter, but I mean that's that's pretty dang good, especially for you know this is not a super thin notebook. 96 sheets is is considerable thickness, but it lies very very flat. If you've got any other questions about Apica Premium or anything else for that matter related to fountain pens, go ahead and hit me up on my blog, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks so much for watching today and right on.